Greetings survivors and friends, Shadowfrax here with episode 24 of Concept Limbo! My long running series looking not at what's in Rust, but what could be. Over the last few episodes I've mainly been inspecting ideas and concepts from you, the community, but today I'm turning my attention back to official concepts as quite a crate load have built up now and it's time to point a long accusatory finger at the and ask, why aren't you in the game yet? Now I'm not saying that anyone at Face Punch is slacking here, apart from Helk, but he's used to me saying that. The thing is that whereas many of the Rust concepts I've considered never get past the 2D artwork stage, the ones I'm going to show you today have all made it as far as being turned into glorious 3D models with a few actually being snaffled away in the game already if you know where to find them. Oh, and before I go on, please subscribe and smack the notification bell for weekly Rust updates, more Concept Limbo, and other stuff. Thanks. So, over on ArtStation, where we'll be spending quite a bit of time this episode, one of the first models we've got to look at isn't exactly unrepresented, but should be more popular with those of you who think some things in Rust shouldn't look quite so manufactured. Back in January 2016, around the same time as wall frames and flamethrowers were being developed, weapon attachments were also being bolted onto the game, and among the first of these we were presented with this model for a crafted scope. Now of course we did go on to get a couple of rather well engineered looking ones, one of which can be crafted, and a simple sight, which is the closest thing in looks but actually has negative magnification so isn't comparable at all. If you ask me, this model would make more sense being used for the craftable eight times. I mean, maybe that was the intention and for some reason it was never used? It certainly looks the part for a crafted item rather than something that fell off the back of the Unity store lorry, and besides, you just look at that image. Is this a glimpse of HDRP? Something that we could definitely do with now that we have so much crap in our pockets and that is, as far as I know, still on the roadmap, has two different 3D models out there at the moment. According to the old roadmap, which isn't online anymore, the idea was, although I'm not saying it still is, to add encumberment, which I'm not a fan of in any game by the way, and that backpacks would increase the amount you could carry before this happened. The slot limit on the main inventory was also due an increase with more being accessible via scrolling. As I say, there are two models for backpacks out there, a military style one as seen here, which has a few nice little details such as a couple of tears and patches, plus what looks like a mutated poppy and a crafted version made from sticks, jump cables, duct tape and some old tarp with cobalt genetic research branding on it. An interesting item as far as the lore goes. Sponsored advert time. Hey, do you fancy jumping into one of over 1200 historically accurate vehicles from all over the 20th century and going head to head in humongous online multiplayer skirmishes? Land, sea, air, horses! Okay, not horses, but they are always adding new stuff so maybe if I ask them really nicely. Whatever the case, War Thunder might be right up your alley. You want an accurate simulation experience with all the knobs and whistles? No problem, they've got that. A realistic mode for challenging historical tactical encounters, you say? Sure, why not? Or perhaps you've just got in from a tough day at the office and need to release a bit of steam with some quick and dirty arcade action. Well, they've got you covered there too. With more than 20 million players around the world on PC, PS4 and Xbox, with crossplay between PC and consoles, and regular new content every couple of months, there's never an excuse for a dull moment, but the best thing is, it's free to play. And if you register using my link in the description, you'll not only be helping out an old horse, but you'll get a free premium tank or aircraft and a three day account boost. But seriously, click on the link because I need the money to buy pies. Back to the video. Talking of loot, there was an effort to add variety and visual clarity to containers a couple of years ago, so you'd be able to judge a box by its cover, as it were, and have a better idea of what sort of things would be rattling around in each one. We now have primitive boxes, tool chests, and a variety of other crates, but did you know about this unused model? The building supplies loot box was the last one to be finished at the end of 2017, but was sadly never used. Maybe because the work surrounding adding building supplies to loot requires a fair amount of rebalancing when it comes to resource gathering in general. Interesting to note, however, that it is actually spawnable in an editor, so it's in there possibly for future deployment and filling. Either way, I love the look of it and I wish I could have a few in my base. My two by one base. Boats! Ask anyone if there are enough boats in Rust and they'll tell you, no, of course not. We need more boats. You can never have enough 
boats. Good to know then that there are not one, but two unused boats in the game files and also spawnable in an editor. First of all, from a couple of years ago, this model of a two-man makeshift raft thrown together from old wood, plastic bottles and a couple of well-used classroom chairs. In addition to this, a paddle or paddles would be required, and it seems the idea was for these to be weaponized because, as you can see here, attack animations were seemingly made so it could be used to smack people around the face with whilst on land. The raft is a two-man unit, as I say, and it looks like both travellers could contribute to powering it forward. Presumably it would be faster with two, but I don't know whether that would require some sort of coordination when it comes to paddling. <laughs> coordination in Rust and that if you got it wrong you could end up going round in circles. Either way, the model is in the game files and animations were made for it, but for the time being, that's where it remains docked. Not much is known about the other vessel, save for it looking like a Terminator version of the rowboat. It was added back at the end of 2018 but remains unused. I'm guessing this is just a more hench version of what we currently have, but whether it's meant to be the rowboat's final form? or just a rarer version, I haven't got the foggiest. There was a new model for the anti-rad pill bottle made, which has never been implemented. Shame. A decent world model would be useful when I chuck them on the floor. Now, do you remember when the bandit camp first appeared out of the mists? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Well, can you recall how excited you were to get down there and start gambling away all those piles of excess scrap you had just lying around? What about when you arrived at the casino and realised the only game on offer was Wheel of Misfortune and that the poker tables were just props? Fortunately, the plan was, and hopefully still is, to include more gambling opportunities and games, and not long after the Bandit Camp update, we were shown this model for a fruit machine. It would accept scrap as well and offer a variety of payouts with pictures to line up including low-grade apples, ropes, scrap and sevens. Sadly though, all the bandits at the camp still have two arms, so we'll just have to wait a bit longer for the fun to really start. The next two items on my list are related even though they were modelled a little while apart and the first one is this, a CO2 fire extinguisher, which from the way this example set up seems to be meant as more than just a prop. It was modelled out of the blue and without any context. However, a small while later, we were shown this cheeky little model. Now, it's something I've mentioned before that the aim is to have both handcrafted and military versions of each weapon in the game, at which point I'd like to say that I'm really looking forward to getting that tactical Yoka. Many of these are already in, but one that's conspicuous by its absence is a tier 2 flamethrower. Again, there wasn't much context given for this model, although interestingly it did coincide with some more talk of making things in the game properly flammable, so perhaps both of these items they're currently on the back burner, waiting for that change. Electricity was introduced to Rust on its fifth anniversary back at the end of 2018, and even though many of you still haven't learnt how to use it, that hasn't stopped the team from adding a ton of functionality to it, with an insane amount of potential for producing traps, automated systems, and generating power. Speaking of which, a couple of electrical items that we've only seen as models so far are next, which would presumably count as one. Firstly, a wall-mounted generator, which as you can see is only meant to be visible from one side, and this is because, as you can also see here just poking around the corner, it's meant to be paired with this, a water wheel slash human hamster wheel. If you could wedge this in a river just right, then constant clean energy could be yours, but even if not, it's big enough to comfortably fit a slave, I mean willing clan member who could turn calories into rust watt hours for you. I wonder if it ever becomes possible to tame animals that we could maybe harness some boar power in return for scraps. I'm sure that'd get the electricity crackling. Sticking to the subject of energy for a moment, did you know something rather large is wallowing just under the surface of rust? You see, you might still be relying on one of these pathetic little things to fuel your army of tuna can wall lamps. Well, how about this instead? Introducing the Large Refinery, an absolute unit that, yes, might make your neighbours think you're compensating for something, but could probably produce enough low-grade in a day to kill Godzilla. 
Or maybe the plan is for it to even emit diesel if necessary. Now that's a thing. Some evidence to back this up can be found on DevBlog72 from August 2015, where it was first shown and stated as being the same as the small version but would give access to different types of fuel. It went on to say that just like a real fractioning tower, the higher you go, the finer the yield of fuel will be. And as you can see, each level has its own outlet, with three in total. So is this an indication of how many fuel types we can eventually expect to have? As well as climbing up to the top to harvest the teen spirit, it could also double as a handy watchtower, being the tallest deployable in the game or not in the game, as I should say. The caveat in this paragraph was that the gameplay loop for this item was yet to be implemented. However, as you can see, it is in the game files and looks amazing, albeit without the functionality. So presumably, at some point, it will be making an appearance. There are some resources modeled that so far we don't need to use and maybe never will, but that are worth a mention nonetheless. Duct tape is one, which on its own I can think of several uses for when it comes to other players, and bleach which I could probably say the same about. They were both added with the component system, but never used in any recipes so far. However, they're in the game and their models can be spawned by admins. Coconuts. About a year ago, we saw models not just for a whole coconut, but also the end result of hitting someone over the head with it. These were modeled after the palm tree artwork was changed to coconut instead of date. But so far, the team have shied away from adding them. Also, do you remember the cobalt spawn barge shown at the end of 2018? This was supposed to be an alternative spawn point for players with peacekeeper turrets to avoid aggro and that would circle the island so fresh spawns could jump off and swim ashore wherever they felt would be best. This would be an interesting option since spawn sites were restricted to one side of the island and there was also talk of having the choice to spawn at various landmarks, but so far this is still out to sea. So questions, out of all of these models which would you add next if you could, which if any would you not want to see? and why? Leave me your comments and thoughts down below. Please consider supporting my habits here on Patreon, like these amazing chaps on the right. I'm live on Twitch three times a week, come and chat to me there. You can also stay up to date with my content on Twitter, Facebook, Discord and my Steam group, links below. And I shall catch you all soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. Coconuts!